Yeah. I got a drink of living lavish in the kitchen with magic. I got drink of living lavish in the kitchen with magic. We got London on the track. I ain't asked now for nothing. I took the heart away. Twelve put me over, coming with it. They took my heart away. Heart away. Heart away. Heart away. Jump in it hard away. Um, hello. <laughs> Fair warning. This entire video is gonna be just as awkward as this intro because. I don't even know what I'm doing, truth be told. Um, but this is my YouTube channel. So what I really want to do, like, I don't want to use this video to be like an introduction or to give y'all like a rundown of my life. Like, I kind of just want to get right into the nitty gritty um, of why I'm doing this and what it's for and like what its intended purpose is. And so... Um, Many of you know, like I launched my first, um, my first solo venture, The Horizon Company. Um, I launched it roughly three and a half weeks ago now. So I launched it on a March 18th. Um, and essentially what it is, it's a professional development firm. Um, it's really set in place to make um, professional development, career enhancement, entrepreneurship, something that's accessible and affordable to all people, right? Like regardless of background. Um, and so I kind of just want to walk y'all through how I got to there, um, whether or not I truly feel like that's even my purpose, um, and just this journey that I'm really on right now. Um, because I think a lot of times we use our social media channels to really show our highlight reels, right? To show like the best moments of our life and to show when we're at our peak, but people need to see the other side of it. Like people need to see... Um, or at least hear about the sleepless nights and the fears that we have and the anxiety and just, they just need to see the other side. And so that's what, that's what I want this to be. Like, I want this to be my other side. Um, so like I said, I released the Horizon Company. Um, and then two weeks after that, I released my blog. Um, and it's just WhitneyNThompson.com. Um, and it's pretty much going to align fairly closely with this YouTube channel. Um, and so now is the channel, the debut of my YouTube channel. Um, so I'll just get right into it. I graduated college last year in May. Um, I started looking for jobs. I took the traditional route, right? So I went straight from college to corporate. Like I didn't take a break. I didn't take time off. I didn't do a missionary trip. Like I didn't breathe. I just went straight into the next thing. And I think, um, I did a blog post on this earlier, but I feel like looking back, um, I would have taken a break. Like if I could redo anything, um, I would have taken a break. You know, a lot of times we say that I don't have regrets, like, oh, everything worked out how it should have. But I feel like there's, there should always be like, if you have mistakes, then you should have things that you would look back and do differently. Right. And I think a lot of times people take that and they think it means like, oh, if I didn't make that mistake, like my life wouldn't be the same now. And I don't think people look that deeply into it. I just think it's, what would you tell the next person? You know what I mean? To avoid the pitfalls that you did. Um, and so that's just kind of what I want this to be. And by no means are these my regrets. By no means do I resent the fact that I went straight into corporate. But if I could tell, like my little sister, I tell all the time, like, don't give in to that pressure. You know what I mean? To feel like you have it all together. Like you don't have to know. It's not even fair for somebody to ask you at 18 um, what you want to do for the rest of your life. You don't have a clue. Like you don't know. Um, this this life is just full of whirlwinds and it's full of ups and downs and twists. and turns. Nobody predicted that they would be where they were um, when it's all said and done. So anyway, small rant. I go off on those all the time. So just be prepared for that. But um so senior year of college, I started applying for jobs right out the gate, right? Like I knew it would be tough to get hired. Like I knew the job market um, after college or for post-grads was completely different, um, a completely different beast than the job market during college or in high school. You know, when you're looking for just retail jobs, costs and the jobs where you like, look, if I can get $12 an hour, I'm in there, right? It's not the same ball game. Um, and so I wanted to get ahead of the pack. I started applying like, in November, really, like just really straight out the gate. 
and I wasn't getting too much traction. Like, I would get a call back here, a call back there. But other than that, I mean, it was mainly, and I was cranking them out, y'all. Like, I was sending out applications to stuff that I, I didn't even really care what it was because the way that I looked at it, like, I didn't know what I wanted to do anyway, right? Like, I don't have a clue. It's not like I've um, been somebody that's always been super passionate about one thing. Like, when I die, I'm going to die a dancer. Or, you know, when I die, um, singing, like, music, art. Like, I don't, I never had that. So, it was just like, whatever I get into, I'm going to make it work. Um, And so, I started applying. Just the random stuff. Um, My background, I spent college switching my majors all the time, y'all. Like, I swear, I changed my major um, my friends joke, but it's probably true every year, right? So I majored in, I started out in like international studies and like political science and then I switched to social work. Um, I majored in marketing, communication. When it was all said and done, I ended up getting my degree, um, in what's called interdisciplinary studies. And so it basically just took all of those, um, subject matters and mushed them together. So my concentrations ended up being marketing, um, social work and communication. So, and I ended up in auto finance, so, but we, we'll get there. Um, so I started out just doing really like social work types jobs. And so I love that. Like that's always been, um, where my heart has been. Um, I've been a preschool teacher. I've been like a crisis nursery associate. Like I've worked at crisis nurseries. Like that's just really where my heart was. Um, but I knew that career wise, I didn't know if that was something that I could make into a career. Um, and so So I started um, applying for jobs and I started looking at my resume. I'm like, why am I not getting calls back? Because I had good experience. Like it sounds like I was all over the place and I was, but I had good work experience. Like me being all over the place led me to do so many different internships. Like um, my junior year, I packed up just in the middle. Y'all, it was some crazy. Like, look, I have never been um, a rule follower. Okay. Like I've never been somebody that that does things that make sense. Um, I've always just marched to the beat of my own drum. And so my junior year, I packed it up um, and I just moved to, I really hope this stops beeping. Okay, there it is. Um, So I packed it up and I moved to Arizona. Now, I got an internship with the Make-A-Wish Foundation and I loved it. Like I loved it, loved it, loved it. It was one of my favorite internships. Um, And I just fell into it, y'all. Like I was sitting, it was finals time. And I was sitting there with um, my best friend and I was just like, hey, I'm done with this. I don't want to take these finals. I'm moving. And so I filled out this application just playing. Like, just like, oh, I'm just going to fill this out. Y'all, a month later, I was moving to Arizona. So um, that's just, like, that's how my life works, honestly. So I did that. Um, and I had another internship um, with, like, a home loans company. And I had um, done, like, all of their marketing, all of their social media management. Um, I had an, I had been working with a football team, with, like, an SEC football team um, since my freshman year. Like, I had good work experience. Um, so I couldn't understand why I couldn't, like, get a call back. Um, and I knew I, that I was competing in a different candidate pool, but at the same time, it was just like, okay, I should be getting some traction, at least more than I'm getting. And so I started to look at my resume, and I'm like, if the first thing that they, if the deciding factor on whether or not they even call me is my resume, then it must be a problem there, right? Like that must be pro- problematic. And so I started looking up like all these different ways, like um, what recruiters look for, what's important to them, what matters in a resume, what doesn't matter. And so I just, I just scrapped my resume and started all the way over. And that changed the game. <laughs> um, once I did that, child, it was a whole new, I was, I was playing a whole different ball game. Like instead of me, just hoping that I can get a job. I was being choosy. Like I had interviews all over the place. I was traveling on the weekends for interviews. Um, I had got down to a point where I was like, okay, these are my top few choices. And about a week before graduation, God just really put it into my spirit. Like you were able to find out what was holding you back, but look around at all of your peers that are in the same place. Like they're not getting traction. They're even closer to graduation. Um, They don't have even any interviews lined up. Like just really challenged me to take a step and to look at what was around me. And so I took a week um, and I just started doing resumes and cover letters for free. Like I just, I just threw it on my social media. And I didn't even have to know you just anybody that needed a resume done, email me and I'll get it done. I ended up doing like 40 resumes that week. Um, and so that kind of was the birth of the Horizon company. Um, and so that's kind of where that just stemmed from. Um, but shortly after that, I began to 
nailed down my choices and I finally um landed on I know I wanted to move to Dallas which is where I am now um and I landed on a bank um never would y'all look full disclosure math not for your girl math is not my strong suit at all like I was in the store with my mama this weekend and something happened and I was so far off. Like, it was, like, basically simple math, like, eight times something. I was like, oh, yeah, we should have 84 of them. And she was like, it's not right. <laughs> so, um, math is not my strong suit. So, um, once that was all said and done, give me just a second. All right, y'all, sorry, I'm back. I'm cooking, and so that timer was just, it was going to send me over the edge. Um, what was talking about? Oh. Y'all, my attention span is trash. Since I didn't do an introductory video, like, y'all will just have to learn about me as we go. So, just keep that in mind. My attention span ain't worth it. Oh, um, so I took my job, um, and I thought it was going to be a great fit. Like, um, Fortune 500 bank, um, great company, great people, um, nothing in my field. Like I said, I ended up working in auto finance. And so, I was hired into, um, basically a rotational program where they, essentially train you up for management like they rotated me through all of the different um subsections in auto finance and we went through all the different departments and all of that good stuff um and then they placed us into a management role so 23 years old um 22 at the time managing a team of 15 people um in auto finance and I'm not even a math guru and I was killing it if I must say um, no, but really, like, I'm not trying to brag on myself, but I, I was like, anything I do, I'm going to do it well. Um, but around January, I decided to feel like that wasn't it. Like, you know, um, and it's crazy because, and I'm going to read you guys this, um, but it's crazy because I have really just been praying for just the past, from January to February, I would say I was just in deep prayer. Like, God, just show me, um, I'm sorry, I'm trying to pull this up and talk. But show me what it is that you need me to be doing because I, I don't feel like this is it. Like in my spirit, I don't feel fulfilled. I don't feel like um, this is where I need to be long term. Right. And so it was crazy because like this same time last year, I had written a post. Now, my job, like I said, um, I love my job. I love my boss. I love my team. Um, and I'm still there. I make good money. Like I do well, but I'm not fulfilled. And that just kind of led me to where I am now, which is on this really just journey of discovering purpose. Um, and so I wrote this post. I finally found it, y'all. But I said, are you praying for increase? The most difficult decision of increase is not between good and bad. It's between good and best. It's easy to follow God's instruction when things are going so well. And the blessing is obvious. But what about when things are going perfectly fine and God calls you out to further? If he calls you to leave your good in pursuit of his best, will you do it? Will you leave your good job making nice money or your relationship making decent progress in search of God's best for you? It's easy to choose good over bad, but can you choose best over good? That is where true increase lies. Don't y'all hate when God use your own words? <laughs> your own words to set you up, man. Um, but no, it was, I read that at the right time. I literally wrote that a year from the day, a day that I was just, man <laughs> like um I guess full disclosure like this has been jacking me up y'all like I feel like I go through days where I'm just not here like I'm just like what am I doing this for like recently I mean like really recently um I went through a phase for like a week and a half straight where I could not sleep at night. Like every night I was waking up and it was to the point where I was like, my body physically hurt. I was so tired. Um, I was working 50 hours a week and I wasn't sleeping at night because my spirit couldn't rest. Um, yeah, <laughs> it was just, it's just not good. Um, I found a church home here and I've been really active there. Um, just really trying to catch my foot in and um, get it all together. But to answer the question of this video, do I feel like um, the Horizon company is my ultimate purpose in life? I don't. Um, 
I feel like it's something that God wants me to do now that he wants me to focus on now. But do I feel like my ultimate um, mission is to increase professional development? I don't. Um, It's something that I love doing. It's something that I enjoy for right now. It's not something that I even want to do in a specific take that back. It is something that I really want to do in a specific area, right? Like, um, I want to do it for people who don't have access to things like that already, right? Like, I don't want to just take, um, money from college kids to help them get the same jobs that I got. Like, I want to be able to go into re-entry programs and help felons and, um, go into shelters and help women who are trying to get their lives, you know, back on track after, um, just terrible relationships and, traumatic domestic violence instances and um in the crisis nurseries or teen shelters where I worked for so long to be able to help those people right um and so long story short I don't like know my purpose y'all I don't um but I'm at a point where I'm I'm gonna find out right like I'm at a point where um I think a lot of times and we see this throughout the bible where characters get to a point where God just tells them like You've done enough praying. You need to get up and move. Like, you need to do something. Um, I mean, we see it with Joshua where he told him, get up. Like, stop praying, get up, and go figure out what the problem is. And so I I really think that that's where I am now. And sometimes people say, like, you know, um, that they're in a silent season or that they're in a season of waiting or in a season of learning to be content. And I'm not in those seasons right now. Um, I'm in a season of get up and do something different, right? Um... And so that's kind of life for me. That's what all of this is about. Um, That's why um, I've been very transparent on my social media is why I have um, revamped my blog and started this YouTube channel because I know that I'm not the only one that's in this position, right, Um, that checked all of the boxes and it's still not enough. Um, That did everything the right way, right, that went to college and got their degree and got their job and they don't feel like themselves, right? Um, And so I don't want y'all to feel like that's not right. Like a lot of people call it like post-grad depression or um, a quarter-life crisis, but it's none of those things. I really think it's you get into a point where you start to understand that life is so much bigger than the things that you've been chasing, right? Um, You get to a point where you're like, wait, there's more to me than this. Um, I'm not just here to clock in, clock out, work at a cubicle. Um, I'm not here to enforce attendance policies. I'm not here to feel phone calls from angry customers, like whatever, it, whatever it is that you're doing. Um, I think if you don't, if you neglect your purpose and you live in a space of settling for a life that you know that you don't want, and we see it all the time, like, right, we see it in our grandparents and we see it in um, our parents. At some point, everybody gets to a point where they feel like this wasn't what I signed up for. Like this, this wasn't, um, what I was here for. And I think if you're blessed enough to feel that urge and that inkling early on, um, at this age, at 23, to feel like this is not what I signed up for. If you're brave enough, um, to pursue finding out what it is that you're here for, I think you'll change your life. Like, I think you'll change your family's life. You'll change generations. You'll be able to exceed what you thought you were capable of by leaps and bounds because there's so much more um and that's what this journey is for me it's just figuring out what more is um figuring out why I was here right like all of those eggs floating around and I was the one that made it like come on I had to be I had to be so special <laughs> um so I just want y'all to feel okay like I just want everybody to be okay in that space of I'm not sure but I know it ain't this and I'm going to figure out what it is because at the end of the day, we all get there. Um, and so that's what this is. This will just be my journey. This will just be um, step by step. Me just figuring it out. Um, I'll show my ups. I'll show my downs. I'll show the things that 
I struggle with, I show the conversations that I have with God and the things that he lets me know, the frustrations that I have with God, um, the questions that I have regarding faith and purpose. And I'll show um, my journey at work because I'm still there. Um, I don't know for how much longer, but I'm there. And so I'll show all of that. Um, and I'm confident that it's going gonna, it's gonna to be something. Um, eventually I'm going to figure it out, right? Because that's the most important thing to me right now. The most important thing to me right now is figuring out why I'm here. Um, so I hope that y'all will join me. I hope that you guys will, um, take something from this. Like I just, I hope that y'all will write back. I hope that y'all will communicate with me. I hope that, um, I hope that man that y'all can just watch my struggle and be like, okay, look. If Whitney Raggedy Behind can't get this together, like, <laughs> so can I. Um, so I'll see y'all later. And um, until the next video, that just is what it is. So this closing is just as awkward as the opening. <laughs> y'all have a good night.